tell us your first and last name. Katarina Brioni. And please spell both of those names. C-A-R-O-L-I-N-A C-R-I-E-T-O. Thank you. Thank and you if you could pull the microphone closer to you and uh, please speak into it. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. In September and October of 2021, where were you living? Inspire, the Spire building. What apartment? Apartment, um, oh my god, I moved <laughs> a year ago, I don't remember. What was it, 3507? 3507, yes. And who were you living in that apartment with? I was living with Daniel Lacerda. Uh, who was living in the apartment directly across from you in 3508? Um, it was Lee and, um, his, um, I don't remember her name. Uh, had you ever met Ali? Uh, before, uh, like maybe once or twice. Uh, you wouldn't say you were close with him? No. Do you see him here in the courtroom? Yes. Can you point out where he's sitting and describe articles of clothing he is currently wearing? Um, he's wearing a blue shirt. Um, I met him, the first time I met him was, uh, we had a reunion in our apartment at night and he came over for a few minutes. Was that for Daniel's birthday? No, I don't remember. Okay. Did you have any conversations with the defendant inside your apartment? No. I did see her once in the elevator. Okay. If you look in front of you, people exhibit number one, do you recognize that woman? Yes. Who is that? Yeah, that that's um that's his ex um wife. Okay. And is that Anna who you met in the elevator? Correct, yes. Uh, had you met her on any of other occasions besides the elevator? Uh, one other time, um, she knocked on our door, um, asking for help. Do you recall when that was? I don't recall the exact date. What month or year? Um, around August, I will say. Not or so, yeah, around August. Started to say, did you start to say September? Or September, yes. It's difficult to remember the exact time. It frame. was a long time ago, I'm sorry. Okay. So, uh, sometime in, you said August or September of 2021? Correct. Okay. Uh, and so, what alerted you to um, the situation outside your apartment? Uh, she knocked on our door asking for help. Um, they were, I believe, on a fight. And um, she asked for a phone number to call her family members. Okay. What time was this? It was at night. Was it late at night? Or do you remember if it was before or after midnight? Before. Were you sleeping? No, we were watching TV. Like around 9, I will say. Sorry. Around 9 p.m., I will say, 8 or 9. Okay, just give it your best guess. 8. Yes. Could you hear anything coming from apartment 3508? Yes. What did you hear? Um, there, I heard, we heard uh, screams and loud noises of, I don't know, things dropping on the floor. Who was screaming? Um, I, I believe both of them, Anna and Lee, and the baby. Did they have a child in the apartment? Do they have a what? A child? Yes. How old? I, I believe she was around uh, five or six. And so you said the child was screaming? Yeah, I think all of them were. You said you heard things dropping on the floor. What do you mean by that? 
It's like loud noises. Did you hear any particular items that made you think things were being dropped on the floor? No, I could not. I wouldn't be able to identify exactly what. It was just loud noises coming from the other apartment. Do you know for how long you heard that? Um, I would say like 10 minutes. Daniel did. Yeah, we both did. Okay. And who opened the door to your apartment? Daniel. And when he opened the door, where were you? I came to the door with him, I believe. And what did you see when you looked out your door? Um, so Anna was asking for help. Um, she's, I think she first said, Call 911, and then she said, No, never mind. And I just called my family, and she just borrowed Daniel's phone. What was her demeanor like, Anna's demeanor? Um, she was very, very worried. Um, I think she was crying. Um, yeah, just asking for help. Where was Anna standing when she was telling you these things? By the door, our door. Uh, that's going to be both of our doors. Apartment 3507 and 3506. Oh, where is your door? On the left or the right of the photograph? 30, 3507 to the left. Okay. And where is 3508? Across. Okay. And so this is a fair and accurate depiction of the two apartments and the distance between them? Correct. Okay. So when Anna was crying and you said looking worried and asking um, to call 911, where was she? Um, she was in front of our door. Okay, so in People's Exhibit number 18, she was closer to the left where your door is. Correct. And what did she, and are you standing inside your apartment or outside? Inside. Inside the door frame? Inside of our apartment. When Anna was telling you these things, did she tell you what uh, someone had done to her? Uh, yeah, she did mention that Ali was beating her. Right. Did she use those words Ali, or did she use another term for him? He. He said he. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, did you know that they were husband and wife? Yes. And from what you could see, was there anyone else inside the apartment? He was inside the apartment. Okay. Uh, he meaning the defendant who's sitting here in court? Co correct. Uh, so the defendant and Amira are inside the apartment? The like the child? Yes. Sorry. Did you know her to be Amira? No. Okay. So the child and uh, the defendant were inside the apartment? Did you see anyone? Is that a yes? No. Um, the child was with Anna outside of the apartment when she asked for help. No. Just the three of them? Mm-hmm. So yes. when Anna was outside crying, where was the child Amira? Next to her. What was Amira's demeanor like? She was also asking for help. Was Amira crying? Yes. I don't remember the exact words she used. Did Amira say anything about what had happened? Judge Cameron calls for your statement. Uh, sustained. Did, when, when Anna told you that he was beating her, that, did she give any other details? No, she just asked for a phone to call her family. Um, I remember we left the door, we 
Daniel gave his phone to her and she took it and we just left the door open in case she needed anything else. Um, yeah. When Anna asked for, did Anna ask you guys to call 911 or did she ask for a phone to call 911? I think she first asked to call 911 and then she said no, never mind, can I just have a phone to call my family? Because Ali took her phone. Was Anna asking you for help? Yes. Did she use those, that word? Yes. When she <coughs> asked for the phone to call 911 and then said, no, I'll call my family, uh, what was her demeanor? She was very worried, crying. No. And did Amira say anything else to you before did she, she went back inside the apartment? No. Did you hear the defendant say anything inside his apartment? No. Did you see the defendant leave his apartment at some point? No. Not that same night. Right. When you went back inside and left the door open, where were you sitting? In the couch. Right. Could you see everything that was happening outside? No. How long did you leave the door open? Like 10 minutes, I would say. Five or 10 minutes. Uh, did you see if Anna went back inside with the phone or where she went? Yeah, she, I think she went back inside with the phone give it back to Daniel, I will say, after five or ten minutes. Uh, did she ever say anything about her phone? She said Ali took her phone. Sorry, can you repeat the question? From what you could tell, based on Anna's demeanor and her words, was she struggling with the decision to call 911? Yes. Were you able to see the defendant's demeanor or his facial expressions? No. Did you see whether or not I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure about that. Right. You weren't paying attention to everything that was happening outside once you went back into your apartment? I wasn't. We closed the door. Okay. Besides that incident, were there any other times where you heard uh, any violence or screaming from apartment Yeah, uh, yes. How many times? I would say two. What did you hear? Just screams, loud noises. Just screams from who? Both. Both who? Uh, Ali and Anna. <laughs> and what about Amira, the child? No. Did hear anything um, violent inside apartment 3508? Yes. What did you hear? Just the fighting, the, like twice. What do you mean by fighting? Um, like screaming back and forth in between Ali and Anna. Did you ever hear uh, any noises or items being thrown, things like that? Yes. 
Um, yeah, just loud noises. I, I, I couldn't tell what it was, but just you could just tell that there was some sort of fight. And did you ever hear Anna screaming any words in particular? No. Not that I remember. Uh, do you recall being interviewed by Detective Jay Eelson on October 21st of 2021? Yes. Okay. If I showed you uh, some of your statements regarding the things that you heard Anna and Amira say from inside the apartment, would that help refresh your memory? Yes. Showing you a transcript from your interview uh, on pages 18 and 19. If you could just read to yourself starting um, around line 11 and then reading into the next page um, to line 4. Just read that to yourself and then let me know when you're finished. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what were the words that Anna or Amira would use that you would hear from inside your apartment? Not objection as to Amira or um, her say. You can repeat the question. What were the words that Anna or Amira would use from, that you would hear from inside your apartment? Anna or Amira, what do you divide them between? Is it Anna or Amira? Just saying. Yes. Uh, what were the words that you would hear Anna saying from inside the apartment? Stop it. Okay. Uh, did you hear her? that or state it? Screaming. Did you hear Anna scream that more than once? Yes. On more than one occasion? Yes. Okay. And would you also hear anyone else scream stop it? Your Honor, objection to the speaker's name is raised. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, it's the question is raised. So the alternate version. Sorry. That the kid also scream. On one occasion or more than one? More than one. And on those occasions where you heard uh, screaming or Anna yelling, stop it, uh, could you tell what Anna's demeanor was like? Meaning, was she crying? Was she calm? Yeah, screaming, screaming, worried. Okay. And what about Amira? What, what, how could you tell what her demeanor was like? Also the same, crying and worried. And on those occasions where you would hear screaming from Anna and or Amira, would you hear any of those loud noises that you described? Yes. Items being thrown? Yes. Okay. Would you hear any other type of violence? No. And these times that you heard Anna and Amira screaming, stop it, where were you inside your apartment? Um, in my living room. right after that big fight. Uh, the one where Anna came to your apartment asking for help? Yes. Okay. And who did you see leaving with suitcases? 
That night or at some point? I think it was next day. Was there ever a time where you saw Anna and Mr. Mises? No. Fair to say you weren't watching their apartment all the time. Correct. say October, September at night. Okay. Uh, but you're just not sure? Not sure about the months. It was a long time ago. Alright. And at some point, did that screaming stop? After he moved out, I believe it yeah, stopped. Okay. So, you knew at some point the defendant left the apartment, you're just not sure exactly when. Mm -hmm. But yes. after the after the defendant left, then all that screaming stopped. Correct. Before October 21st of 2021, did you have any other conversations with Anna about the defendant or no. anything else? Okay. So I want to talk to you about October 21st, 2021. Were you working that day? I was working at home. Were you working at home all day? Yes. And where do you work inside your home? In my office. At some point that day, uh, did you hear anything that concerned you? No. Uh, what about as we're getting towards 3 p.m.? Yes. What did you hear? I heard shots. What do you mean by shots? Uh, gunshots. Gunshots. Are you still inside your office? Yes. Before the gunshots, did you hear any other anything coming from apartment three five zero eight? No. Any screaming? No. Any uh, loud noises? No. Any words exchanged between people? No. Uh, any conversation? Um, spoken by any males? No. Inside that apartment? Okay. It's a no? No. Okay. When you heard the gunshots, could you tell where they were coming from? I heard the gunshots and I ran through the door to see through the peephole. Are there any apartments that There was an apartment next to me and an apartment across. Is that further away, down the hall? Further away. Okay. Is there a trash chute uh, to the right of your apartment? Yes. Okay. And so any apartments would be past that trash chute? Correct. Okay. Uh, so you hear the gunshots, um, and then you said you run to your door? Mm -hmm. What do you do at your door? I, I I ran through my door to see um, through the peephole, the fish eye. Okay. Right. How many gunshots did you hear? Multiple. Remember how many? Four or six. They were a lot. Yes. I was very nervous at the moment. I didn't really count when I heard them. Understood. But when you hear the gunshots, you said you went to your front door and you look out your people. What do you see? What can you see outside the people? It was um, quiet for a moment, and then I see a lady coming outside of his apartment. So just talking first about the outside your people, what can you see? I can see across the the door um, straight to apartment 3506. 3508? 
Sorry, yeah, 3505, right across. The apartment right across from you. Yeah, I can see the door very clearly. Right. Can you see the whole door through the peephole? Yes. Uh, can you see any part of the floor? Yes. And how much, can you, I know there's a wall to the left of you, right? Mm -hmm. How much can you see to the right when you're looking out the peephole? I can see a little bit of the hallway. shots and you run to you, you do you run to your front door yes walk? run and you look outside your peephole and uh, is apartment 3508 is the front door closed yes when you first look yes right. and you said you heard quiet for a moment or two mm -hmm. and then you said you saw Ali uh, you're talking about the defendant here in court correct what do you see he came out of the apartment. So the defendant opened the door to 3508 and walked out of his apartment? Correct. Okay. Uh, where does he go? Um, I believe he went towards like the elevator. Um, then he came back. Um, he screamed Anna a few times. He grabbed something from his mat doormat, like mail, and then he left. Okay. When you see the defendant leaving his apartment, is he walking or running? He was walking. Okay. And uh, do you see his demeanor at all? Yeah, he seemed, he seemed um, worried, like in a rush. Okay. What was he wearing? Dark clothes, like like a dark hoodie. What color? color? Black. And do you recall what kind of uh, pants? Dark pants as well, black. Did you see whether or not the defendant had anything in his hand? No. No, you didn't see or no, he didn't have anything? I didn't see. So you see uh, the defendant leaving. He, you see him walk towards the elevator, and then is he out of your sight through the people? Yes. Do you continue? First of all, when he leaves the apartment, uh, does the door to 3508 close? Yes. Do you hear anything from inside the apartment? No. How long, if you recall, um, when the defendant left, Not even a minute. He was right away. A few seconds. Okay, and when the defendant came back, uh, did you say you saw him pick something up from the ground? Yes. Was that before he went back inside the apartment or after? I don't remember. Okay, that's fine. So when you see are you still at your peephole watching the door of 3508? Yes. So when you see the defendant come back to the apartment, what does he have to do to get inside? Um, he opened the door with the fob. Is that how every front door has to be opened? Yes. There's a little black oval where you flash the fob and it opens the door. Correct. Okay, okay so you saw the defendant physically using a fob to open the door. Yes. Right? the apartment? Does the door close then after him? I think so. Okay. Or is he standing in the doorway? I don't remember. Alright, so uh, the defendant goes back into the apartment and you said he screamed Anna? Yes. Did he scream any other name? No. And then how long is the defendant inside the apartment? A few seconds. And then what do you see next? And then I think that's when he grabbed something under the mat, like a piece of mail, and then he leaves. When 
The defendant is back inside the apartment. Uh, do you hear anything else? No. When you see the defendant come back out, he opens the door, and then you, you're watching him lean over to the floor? Yes. To pick up something? Yes. And then where do you see the defendant go? I think he went to the elevator. Yeah, he did. Okay, I'm going to show you a few more exhibits. Okay, now we're on people's exhibit number 19. What is shown here in this photograph? That's uh, my apartment. 3507 and 3508. Is that your apartment 3507 on the left? Yes. And is it 3508 on the right? Correct. Uh, do you see yellow police tape in this photograph? Yes. Okay. So this is a photograph of uh, uh, from October 21st of 2021? Yes. After, after the police arrived? Yes. Uh, do you see the case of water in front of 3508? Yes. Do you, do you recall where the mail was that the defendant picked up when he left? On top of the mat. Okay, so you see a brown mat uh, right in front of 3508? Yes. Uh, so you saw the defendant reach down and pick up the mail from the mat before he left? Yes. Okay. And in this photograph, there's no other apartments nearby, correct? Correct. And uh, the gray door on the left next to your apartment, is that the trash? Yes. All right, if you could flip to the next page, people's exhibit number 20, what is shown here? Apartment 3507. Okay. That's your apartment? Yes. And when you were telling us about the people, do you see that in this exhibit? Yes. Okay. And so that's the people that you're looking out to see 3508. Correct. have to use that key fob on that little black oval? Yes. Is there ever a way to get inside without the key fob? No. Does the door make a sound when it opens and closes? No. Okay. You hear it so when the door opens, you can visibly hear it? I don't think it makes a noise when it opens. No. Uh, what about when the door closes? It automatically locks. But it makes a noise when it closes, correct? Some type of noise, not a bing, but just a, a door closing. Right. You can yeah. visibly hear a door open, right? Yes. And a door close. Yeah, just a natural noise of a door okay. opening. Yes, correct. It's, right. a, it's a heavy door. Down the hallway, yes. How much longer do you watch it? <laughs> I stay there until Daniel comes back home. At some point after you heard the shots, did you contact Daniel? Yes, I text him immediately. Okay. <coughs> and did you call Daniel at some point? I did, but... Um, he didn't have service as he was parking. Okay. So you texted and called Daniel right after, um, but you weren't able to speak with him. Correct. Right, right. And so you, you said you stayed at your peephole until Daniel came home? Yes. Was that shortly after? Yes, just a few minutes. I mean, shortly after you heard the gunshots and the defendant left? Correct. After the defendant left the second time, before Daniel came no. Did you ever see anyone else going into apartment 3508 before the police arrived? No. Did you ever see anyone leaving apartment 3508 before the police arrived? No. <coughs> when Daniel came home, uh, did you tell him what you heard? Yes.
Yes. Uh, did you know that, or did Daniel tell you that he had just seen the defendant in the elevator? Yes. Police arrived before he did. Did the police use your apartment for uh, any investigation? Yes. Uh, were you inside your apartment at that time or outside? Inside. Where were you? In the living room. And then at some point, did the police ask you to go elsewhere? So when the police arrived um, I opened my door and I let them know that Ali was no longer there because I think that the way they were acting they were scared that there was somebody's going to shoot them or something and I told them well he, he already left um, and that's and then they asked me what, what was he wearing. Um, since the last person I saw was Daniel, I unfortunately described the same clothes Daniel was wearing. And then Daniel shows up to the 35th floor where the police were. And then I, I was like, no, 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 it's actually not him. That's Daniel, that's my husband. And then, um, and then I remembered what Ali was wearing, I told him. And then our apartment became part of the, I guess, the, the crime scene. And they put tape um, uh, on both apartments, like in the hallway, kind of blocking both apartments. We couldn't leave the apartment until they were done, uh, I guess, with the investigations. Um, so we stayed in the apartment that whole time. Okay, and at some point you were moved into the stairwell? Uh, yes, I was. Uh, no, in the beginning, when I opened the door, they kind of put me out of my apartment, put me in the stairs, and that's when they were asking the questions, like, what was he wearing, uh, what's his name, what's your name, um, and then that's when Daniel comes, and then we can explain everything, and then we go back into our apartment. But then we cannot leave, leave until the crime scene was over. Okay, and so were you trying to assist the police with their investigation? They did ask me questions, detective, I re responded, yes. I, yeah. And you told the officer, the detective, uh, you were describing the person that you saw after you heard the gunshots, right? Yeah. And so you helped give the police a description of the shooter? Yes. Right? And then did you and Daniel also provide the police with photographs of uh, who you knew the shooter was? Yes. Right? How were you providing those photographs? Instagram. Instagram photographs of who? Ali. Okay. The defendant. Yes. Before the shooting? Correct. I don't remember that. Um, Your Honor, may I approach? Yes. Um, yeah, I'd like to show you what is uh, your statement that's provided to Officer Totten. I'm just going to ask you to just read through it um, to yourself, starting here with the statement of Carolina Lacerda witness. At the time, your last name was Lacerda, is that right? Correct. Okay.
I'm going to just grab that back from you if you don't mind. Thank you. Um, do you recall now having had an opportunity to review uh, the statement that was given by you to Officer Cotton telling him that about 10 minutes ago I could hear a male voice um, yelling and then I heard six loud bangs, correct? Yes. Do you remember telling him that? <coughs> yes. Okay, and then he testified here today um, that he didn't hear anything prior to these six gunshots, is that right? I didn't, I didn't, I, I think Maybe at the time I was really nervous. The only screaming that I heard was after the shots. Um, he screamed Anna. Okay. I don't remember screaming screaming before the shots. Okay, so you told Officer Totten, yes, I heard screaming before the shots, but now as you look back, you think, I don't remember that. Is that correct? correct. Okay. Um, and again, the only screaming that you now remember is Mr. Boulevant screaming after the shots, and that was screaming Anna, Anna, Anna. Correct. You testified previously in this matter at a preliminary hearing, is that correct? Yes. And you were under oath to tell the truth um, when you testified before, is that right? Yes. Um, and at the time, you were asked questions um, by the district attorney, Ms. Grass, um, about other instances that you had heard um, screaming and yelling and things like that coming from the apartment across from yours. Do you recall that? Yes. And at that time, when you testified under oath, you didn't say anything about hearing the words stop it from either Amira or Anna, correct? I remember. Okay. You don't remember what you testified to or you don't remember hearing those words? I remember hearing those words. I don't remember if I testified that in the preliminary hearing. Okay. So at the preliminary hearing back in January of um, 2022 when you testified, you didn't say anything about hearing those words. Is that what you remember? I, I don't remember if I said it or not. I said yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, nothing about specific words of stop it by either Anna or Amira, correct? Correct. When you, um, the night that you say that Anna came to your door, um, you testified for us that you were on the couch watching TV with your husband, is that correct? Correct. And that you heard a loud knock on the door, correct? Yes. But you say prior to hearing the loud knock, you heard screaming and fighting from coming from across the hallway? Yes. Um, and you, your husband then answered the door after the knock? He did. When you heard the screaming and fighting that you say was coming from across the hallway, did you say anything to your husband, Daniel? I don't remember. Is that something that if you'd heard it, you would have said, Daniel, do you hear that? Do you think you would have had any sort of response to hearing that from across the hallway? Yes. So then do you think it's likely that you said something to Daniel? Yeah. To bring it to his attention that you were hearing something from across the hallway? Yes. And that he got up and answered the door, is that right? Yes. And it's your testimony that while your door was open, you could see into the apartment across the hall from yours? Yes. And you could see Mr. Boulevon inside of the apartment? Yes. And you testified previously at the preliminary hearing that you actually saw him kind of coming in and out of the apartment uh, while your door was open, is that right? Yes. You never saw uh, his ankles or his feet like leaving the apartment, anything like that? No. Um, you testified that the next 
say you saw Ali moving out because you saw him with a suitcase. Is that correct? Yes. Um, you saw Ali with a suitcase and you're assuming that he moved out. Is that right? Correct. Because after this incident that you say happened with Anna at the door of your home, uh, Mr. Gouldon actually came to your home for a birthday party for your husband, correct? I remember if that was before or after. Right? Yes. Um, and do you, you don't recall whether then this incident happened before or after September 17th? I don't recall. And all of these times that you're saying you're hearing all of these things coming, do you, you want a minute to think about it? Um, no. Okay, it just looked like you were maybe kind of... I'm trying to remember, I'm sorry. That's, That's okay. a long time ago. It was. No. Did you ever call security for your building? No. Did you ever say anything to Mr. Gulliban? No. On October 21st, when you saw him, Mr. Gulliban, come out of the apartment after the gunshot, um, he looked stressed to you, right? Yes. And frantic? Yes. Um, and he was, did you hear him talking on the phone at all? No. No. Thank you, Mr. Further. Any other questions? Yes, thank you. Uh, you were asked questions and shown a police report uh, with a statement you gave to Officer Totten. Is that right? Yes. And did you ever uh, review Officer Totten's wording of this police report in regards to your statement to make any to be able to make any changes to it? No. Okay. Did you speak with Officer Totten shortly after uh, the police arrived, after you heard the gunshots? Yes. Okay. So when you were telling Officer Totten that you heard a male's voice, uh, were you referring to him screaming Anna? Correct. Okay. So when it's worded as about 10 minutes ago, that's because that's about when, that, when you heard that happen, right? Yes. Okay. So you weren't telling Officer Totten that 10 minutes prior to seeing the defendant, he was screaming, right? That's yes. not what you were telling him. Correct. What you were telling the officer was that you heard the defendant screaming after you heard the gunshots. Correct. Okay. And so if this is worded in a different manner, that's not how you said it, right? Yes. That's just how the police officer worded his report. Yes. <clears throat> because you never heard the defendant say or yell anything prior to the gunshots. Complete silence. Okay. And the only thing you ever heard the defendant yell was the name Anna. Correct. <clears throat> and when you were asked questions about whether or not you testified at the preliminary hearing about Anna saying the word stop it, were you just maybe not necessarily asked that question? I wasn't asked that question, the specific question. Okay. So when you were telling Detective Eelson uh, on October 21st of 2021 that you heard prior violence and screaming and Anna and Amir yelling, stop it. Uh, you were being truthful at that time, right? Yes. And that was fresher in your memory than the preliminary hearing. Correct. Uh, you were asked about whether or not you ever called 911 or the police. Um, did you want to get involved in your neighbor's marriage? No. Is that, is that why you didn't call the police? Correct. And were there times where you did see the police come to their apartment or security? Yes. Okay. Do you know how many times? Once. All right, thank you. Nothing further. Just briefly, do you know that your <coughs> statement to Officer Totten was recorded? Are you aware of that? No. Are you aware that he was wearing a body-worn camera at the time you spoke with him? No. And so when you spoke with him and you said, about 10 minutes ago, I could hear a male's voice, you didn't speak to Officer Totten 10 minutes after the shooting. Right. 
Can you repeat that question? Sure. In your statement to Officer Totten, you said, about 10 minutes ago, I could hear a male's voice. Do you remember saying that? We just talked about that a few minutes ago. Yeah, I just read it. You didn't, when you spoke to Officer Totten, that wasn't 10 minutes after the incident, right? It was a few hours after the incident. Correct. Thank you. Uh, tell us your first and last name. Tracy Hodgson. And please spell both of those names. T-R-A-C-Y-H-O-D-G-S-O-N. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. What is your current occupation? I work for the San Diego Police Department as a police investigative service officer. What does that mean? I retrieve audio, including 911, non-emergency calls, and radio transmission for district attorney, city attorneys, or detectives or sergeants. How long have you held that position? Uh, with the department, 11 years, and in that position, four. What other occupations have you had within the department? I worked in customer service and teletype. What does that mean? Uh, it's a, a unit that enters in stolen vehicles and missing persons. <coughs> Are you a 911 dispatcher? No. Or do you just simply, do you pull the calls and retrieve them and listen to them for law enforcement? Uh, I pull calls and listen to them for law enforcement or attorneys. Okay. Are you a, a custodian of records for uh, communications? Yes. And you said you've held that job for about four years? Yes. How often would you say you pull 911 calls? Probably at least 40 a day. Okay. So you pull 911 calls and you provide them to other agencies? Other agencies or attorneys or detectives or chiefs, sergeants. And can you tell us how you're able to pull those calls? Where are they located? They're located in a system called NICE and I'm able to identify it by the date and the time in the call taker. And you spell nice, is it common spelling? Yes. Okay. How long are 911 calls stored? 25 months. And so, uh, someone asks you to pull a call for a certain incident, you, how do you look it up? Uh, the date and the time in the call taker. What do you mean by call? The operator. Okay. The 911 dispatcher? Yes. Okay. How do you know who the call taker is? They say their ID number at the beginning of the call. Okay, so all you have to have is the date, time, and the ID number for the dispatcher, and you're able to enter that information into the NICE system? Yes. And then pull the call? Yes. Okay. And then how do you save the call once you pull it? It's saved as a WAV file. When you pull a call, where do you put it? Do you put it on a disk? Um, it's saved onto a Y drive. And is that how police officers and detectives can access the 911 call? 
Uh, depending on who the requester is, it's sent to them in a, either a cloud or put on a disk if it's a certain type of crime. And so there are times where you'll put the 911 calls onto a disk and send them out to whatever agency is requesting it? I would hand the disk to the requesting person. And did you pull the ni a 911 call associated with this case from October 21st, 2021 at 3.10 p.m.? Yes. And describe how you were able to pull that call. I looked up the date and the time and the call taker that's referenced in the CAD and was able to pull the call and verify that it was the correct call and save it. Okay. Did you listen to the call? Yes. <laughs> are there other occasions where uh, agencies or law enforcement ask you to pull a call and you listen to a call to verify and then you provide it? Yes. <clears throat> and the who was the call taker for this particular 911 call that you pulled? This one was uh, dispatcher Carrie Sousa. Can you spell that for us, please? C A R R I E. Last name Sousa, S-C-E-U-S-A. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to play that call that you pulled and then I'll ask you some questions about it. I have People's Exhibit number 21 that I will be playing, and the transcript is People's Exhibit 22. Thursday, October 21, 2021, 15, 10, and 26 seconds. Emergency. Dispatcher 8107. Yes, ma'am. My wife and another man were, um, the, I found them dead on the couch. Bullet holes in the face. Wait, someone was shot? Two people, a man and uh, my wife. Okay, what's the location? The what's the location? It's uh, 1475 Island Avenue. Fire in San Diego. It's going to be apartment 3508. Apartment, okay, hold on, this fire. Apartment 3508? Yes. Okay, stand by. Okay, hold on, sir. Sir, sir, stand by. I'm bringing on my supervisor. What is your name? My name is Ali. Ali? Okay. Yes, I'm her husband. I'm her husband. I, I understand. Ali, what's your last name? Abulaban. A B U L A B A N. Okay, hold on. Please, please help them. Sir, stand by for my supervisor. Do not hang up, okay? Okay, but you need to hold on. I'll be here in just a second. What's the okay. number? Three four zero two six. We will need medics. He says his wife was shot. Okay. Okay, sir. Ali. Yeah. Ali, are you there with her? Are you in the apartment? No, I left. Okay, are you nearby? I'm here, man. Okay, hold on. I need to confirm the location. Listen, 1475. Fire in San Diego. Fire in San Diego. Okay, 
And that's her operator at Universe. Okay. So uh, when she says San Diego Emergency Dispatcher 8107, that's her ID number? Yes. So that's the call taker ID number that you enter along with the date and time to locate this call? So when I go to locate the call, they're sitting at a certain console, and I'm looking at the console number. So it's not identified by their ID number, but once they say their ID number, then I know that it's that dispatcher. Yes. Have you heard her voice? Multiple times. Uh, that was her voice? Yes. Uh, the female, the first female voice on the phone? Yes. On the call. Okay. And when, at the beginning of the call, when it says the date and the time, is that a military time? Yes, and it's a timestamp that's applied once the call is saved. Okay. So, when on the call it says 15.10, what time is that? 3.10 p.m. That's when the call is first placed. Yes. By the reporting party. By the caller. That's when the call is picked up by the dispatcher. And when you were listening to this call, the male on the call identifies himself as Ali Abulavan? Yes. Uh, the first, basically, the first thing that Mr. Abulavan says on the call is, I found them dead. Yes. And I found them on the couch. Yes. When the other female comes onto the phone, what is happening there? That's what we refer to as a hot call. So a lead or a supervisor comes on the line at the same time so that the lead or supervisor can also talk as well as the 911 dispatcher. Does that only happen in um, extremely serious cases, or is that in, uh, typical for calls? That would be an extreme case. Okay. And was that this case? Yes. So when when Mr. Boulevard on the call said, "I'm leaving," um, do you was that concerning at all to hear? Many 911 calls, is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. Are calls made by crime victims? Calls are made by all sorts of reporting parties. Okay. So, uh, what is a reporting party? The person that's actually calling 911. Okay. And so, when Mr. Abulavan is calling 911, um, is he referred to as a reporting party? Yes. Mr. Abulavan said, I don't know who he is, then he laid 
later said he did know who the male was, right? Yes. Okay. And then uh, the dispatchers continue to ask him questions, um, and then uh, ultimately they don't hear from him anymore, right? Yes, he hung up. asking Mr. Bullivan, did he have the gun still? And did Mr. Bullivan respond, I don't know, I just walked in to go check on him? Yes. And then afterwards, Mr. Bullivan said, uh, it's so terrible. Like what he saw. Yes. Okay. And at no time did Mr. Bullivan say that he was a shooter in that call? He did not. Okay. Uh, did you know anything about No. And towards the end of the call, uh, the dispatcher is saying, I'll call him back. Uh, is that typical for a dispatcher to do if someone hangs up on them? Yes. Like, why? Because they want to see if they have any more information from the reporting party that can be relayed on the CAD. And uh, according to your research and knowledge of were there any other calls made by Mr. Bullivan after this one? Not to my knowledge without the CAD. Okay. And uh, there was no calls placed by a dispatcher to Mr. Bullivan where he then answered it after this one? Oh, and without the CAD, I wouldn't be able to say for certain. I live sin in both cases. Um, and then you were called as a witness to come in and testify sort of in place of Ms. Sousa, is that correct? That's correct. And when you listen to this, um, you would not only listen to it, but then you have the transcript in front of you, is that right? I have a computer-aided dispatch in front of me, and it notes that the dispatcher is entering in about the call, but it's not an actual transcription. But you have that previously, and then coming in to testify today, Yes. And when the telephone call came in, it didn't come from a, um, a home line, it came from like a cell phone, is that right? Um, if I were to see the CAD, I would be able to tell if it came on a cell phone. When the dispatchers were asking the caller, Mr. Bulavon, where all of this was, he gave the address many times over, right? Yes, that's common. And he told them exactly what it was, where it was, and the apartment number, correct? Yes. Yes. He also um, was asked what happened, um, and he said, no ma'am, something accident. I couldn't even breathe when I saw them. It's so terrible. Is that right? Yes. And you don't know, as you sit here having reviewed this call and listening to it, whether that is, I couldn't even breathe when I saw them, um, at what point um, he was referring to when he saw them, right? Right. to the call, you didn't know whether or not Mr. Bulabong was telling the truth about things he said in the call, right? No. Thank you. Nothing further. Thank you. Thanks, May I have a moment? Yes. Remember, if you want to stand, feel free to stand. have a seat on the witness stand. Please uh, tell us your first and last name. 
Diego Arenas. And please spell out both of those names. D-A-G-O, A-R-E. Officer of the Central Police Department. I'm assigned to a Central Division Patrol. Just make sure you speak slow for the reporter in front of you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. How long have you been a police officer? A little over five years. Can you describe the training that you have received to become a police officer? Went through the academy and then uh, base training. What is base training? It's where you are assigned with a field training officer. That's up four months. And you're evaluated to see if you um, can run on your own. And what type of training did you receive in the academy? Firearms, uh, DTAC, uh, law, case law. Uh, what training have you received in uh, homicide or shooting investigations? They just train us um, with investigating crimes and things to do with that. Are you talking about the academy or on-the-job training? Both. What is the on-the-job training? Uh, base training. Meaning in regards to homicide or shooting investigations? Correct. When you're in base training, you explained you know, what to do when you're investigating a crime. Approximately how many investigations or calls have you responded to regarding shooting? Exact, but probably around five, give or take. All right, I'd like to talk to you about October 21st, 2021. What radio call did you respond to around 3.11 p.m.? A shooting. Where? Um, 1475 Island. Is that in the county of San Diego? Yes, ma'am. Were you wearing a full police uniform? Correct. Were you driving a marked police vehicle? Correct. Were you wearing body-worn cameras? Wearing body worn camera right now. Correct. Can you show the jury where it is? Okay. Let the record reflect the witness pointed to a uh, black camera yes. uh, on the chest area of his uniform. Why do you wear body worn camera? Document any enforcement contacts. What does that mean? Um, anytime uh, we're out in the field responding to a call or stopping somebody or just engaging with the community. We activate our camera if we believe there's potential for enforcement. And does the body worn camera document <coughs> everything in front of you? Correct. And when you interview a crime victim or a witness, uh, is that all documented on the body worn camera? Correct. Who was your partner that day? Officer Todd. And when you responded mm -hmm. um, to 1475 Island Avenue, where did you go? Uh, we parked in front of the apartment complex, and uh, we went to the front lobby. And when you went to the lobby, then what did you do? Um, I pulled out my uh, department rifle. Uh, we waited for a few more officers. Why did you pull out your rifle? Um, it was a hot call, so there was very limited information. Uh, we just knew we responded to a shooting, but we had two potential victims that were injured. Uh, we had no information as far as where the suspect was at, so. You had no information about the suspect? Is that what you said? At the time, initially. Okay. Well, what is a hot call? A hot call is where it's just a critical call, and the call taker makes a decision to basically immediately broadcast information to patrol officers. So the only information initially we have is generally like it's a stabbing or a shooting in a location. And as the call taker is getting the details from the reporting party, uh, we get updates on the call. Okay. And so what other information did you receive during that hot call? Oh, we had the unit number. And um, I believe the, report, the reporting party, the caller, identified himself as Ali Bulan. And he said his wife um, and a male had been shot in the apartment. And so at that point, did you know whether the shooter was still inside the apartment or somewhere else? We did not know where he was at. How long did 
did it take you to arrive at the building after you got the dispatch call at 3.11 p.m.? Say a few minutes, maybe. It was quick. Yes, ma'am. So you enter the lobby and you said you have your rifle out. Correct. Then where do you go? Oh, we're waiting for officers, kind of establishing a plan. Um, and then a male comes out, uh, Daniel Lasser, I believe. Uh, he lived across um, 3508 with his wife. And I believe he told one of the officers uh, something to the effect that his wife had heard the gunshots, or he had heard the gunshots. Okay, and when you spoke with Mr. Lacerda, where was this? It was um, in the front lobby, right by the elevators. And so you were waiting in the lobby to form the team, waiting for some other officers? Correct, we're still trying to figure out just a contact team and a plan to go up there. And why was it that you were trying to figure out uh, a plan? Um, we just want to respond to these, you know, shootings, critical incidents with limited information. Uh, we want to make sure we have some sort of plan in place, um, especially when the suspect's outstanding. We have no details as to what they look like or where they're at. We want at least some sort of lethal coverage, um, less lethal if we can have it, and then some sort of uh, hands team and a canine if possible. Okay. What's a hands team? Someone that would just take the person into custody and place them in handcuffs. And why would you need a canine team? Um, any, again, anytime we are con contacting someone, um, like someone that's possibly a suspect of a shooting on the weapon, uh, we always uh, get a contact team, which again includes you know, lethal, less lethal, someone to arrest the person, and then we want the canine, um, just so we have all our de-escalation. I believe um, Mr. Lacerda had the key fob. And where did you go? To the 35th floor. How long did it take to get up to the 35th floor? A few minutes. From when we saw him to when we actually got up there. Were stops made on the elevator? I think, getting on and off? I think it opened at one point and then boom, we just continued up. the hallways and we made it to, we, we located where the, where 3508 and then um, Mr. Lift Service apartment was at. Okay. And how many officers are there at that time? I think we had at least four or five officers. Officers kept coming in as time went on. Why is that? Uh, we started broadcasting some information. It was kind of difficult due to the high rise. We didn't have good radio reception. But I believe at one point, um, Officer Nislet activated his emergency. Oh, Nislet? Uh, he activated his emergency button on his radio. So at that point, just every officer started making their way towards us. Okay. And so when you got off the elevator, uh, did you have to make some turns to get to the apartment? Correct. Where did you go? I don't recall the exact turns. Okay. So at some point, you get to the end of the hallway? Correct. There was like a stairway, like alcove. Um, we kind of set up there so we had some sort of cover. And then um, we just started making call outs to uh, 3508. What does that mean? Uh, whenever we're addressing someone in an apartment or in a building or in a vehicle, we, we announce ourselves as police and then we give them commands um, to what we want them to do. Uh, did you hear anything from inside apartment? Officer Nisla was giving commands, and I think at some point during that, uh, Mr. Wizard's wife, I think she opened the door, um, and we noticed that. When she opened the door, then what did you do? I think initially we told her to um, close the door. 
and then we made a decision that we would use her apartment or their apartment as a stepping like the we would move all the officers there better tactical position what does that mean the position we were at there was a lot of officers exposed um and it was a lot of us in that little stairway entrance so we decided it'd be better if we could start getting resources we could have the officers all tuck in into the uh the neighboring apartment and then it would just minimize the exposure to the officers at that time do you know whether or not the shooter is still inside the apartment we still don't know so you said that it's a better tactical decision to go inside the neighboring apartment uh, for the police to have cover correct so when uh, you are all inside apartment 3507 how many officers are Inside. Probably at least 10. I know we had a few cannon officers, a um, few supervisors, uh, and again, there was just officers making their way, so there was quite a few of us. Okay, what do you mean by supervisors? Sergeants. Okay. And when you're inside apartment 3507, uh, what plan is being formed? Um, I believe prior to that, we had asked for a knocker, a shield, um, so we started setting up the shield for cover. Um, and we're, I think we're making the plan to make an emergency entry and force entry into uh, 3508. What is a knocker? Um, big piece of metal covered in plastic with two handles, and we use it to forcibly enter and knock down doors. Uh, were you able to get inside 3508 any other way? No. You didn't have a key fob to get inside? Correct. Okay. Is that how you enter those apartments? Uh, it depends on the high-rise of the key fobs, keys, or the pin. How long are you and the other officers and sergeants inside 3507? Maybe five minutes. And then what is the plan that's ultimately developed? Um, I'd be lethal. Um, so I'd be number one to the door. Um, Sergeant Nguyen uh, was going to use a knocker to force entry. And then we were, I believe the plan was to stop and evaluate what we had once the door was open. Okay. So you were assigned as the number one uh, officer to go into the apartment? Correct. Okay. And when you said you were assigned lethal, what does that mean? Um, that my sole job was to address any, like if I had to use deadly force, that would be my job. And why would you have to use force? Um, the shooter was still outstanding. And we didn't know where he was at. Now, at the time that you got that hot call, you said that was from Aliyah Boulevard. Did you know at that time that he was a shooter? No. Uh, did you know uh, whether or not the information he provided on that 911 call was truthful? Yeah, Jeff, can I call some speculation slash foundation elements? Uh, did you know whether any information that Mr. Boulevard provided on that call was truthful? No. Okay. So, uh, did, you, did you receive information that he had notes just said that his wife and a male had been shot in the apartment. Alright, I'm going to play another recording. Four minutes. Okay. Um, I'm going to play for you People's Exhibit number 23. Body-worn camera clip and people's 24 is the transcript.
have two down. Merge the entry. I need a team. I need a team. I need a team. Emily, you got three. Right. You got three. Did it come to order? establishing a plan 
was that all on your body worn camera? Correct. Okay. And so what we saw here was just this, um, the plan in action, the breaking down of the door. Correct. Okay. And then you're the one who is first up holding the rifle, correct? Correct. <coughs> Once you enter, uh, what are you? Why are you clearing all the rooms? Uh, we still don't know where the suspect's at, so we just want to make sure we're safe and we've cleared the apartment. Okay. Uh, so you were checking the bathroom and you didn't see a suspect in there. Correct. Uh, same with the office area. Correct. And can you describe how that office appeared? Uh, it looked like it was like ransacked. Why do you say ransacked? Just everything was on the ground. It looked like someone. Had like searching for something or going through it. And then did you search the closet in that room and you said clear? Correct. Okay. So didn't see a suspect in there? Correct. And then you moved on to the balcony? Correct. And you cleared the balcony? While you were doing that, uh, were the other officers trying to attend to the two victims on the couch? Correct. So when you came, uh, when you first came into the apartment, was the coffee table set up in front of uh, the two bodies? Correct. Meaning in, in its normal position? Correct. Okay. And then did an officer move the coffee table? Correct. Why was that done? Uh, so just better um, assess the victims and render first aid. Now, at the time that you entered, uh, did you know that both the victims were deceased? I did not know. Okay. How was that determined? Um, really, the officers that contact them they're the ones that have stated that okay so when you hear uh, in the video that uh, about checking pulse mm -hmm. uh, is that what the officers were doing to render first aid I believe so <coughs> when you on the video after you are clearing uh, those all the rooms on the left uh, you said we need to clear out and just hold it off what did you mean by that um, at that point we had you know determined they uh, were deceased so we wanted to maintain uh, the crime scene to preserve whatever evidence was there. And were you and the other officers uh, making sure uh, like where you were walking? Correct. Uh, were there things on the ground? Correct. What, what was on the ground? Uh, I believe there was uh, spent shell casings and then um, some live rounds that were found. What is a spent shell casing? I think it's been fired. We just want to, you know, once we determine you know, that they were deceased, we want to just try to maintain everything at its original position. So that's why, you know, we had a lot of officers moving through. So we want to make sure that you know, we have minimal officers walking through the crime scene now. Okay. And that's <coughs> standard procedure Correct. when you're responding to these calls? Correct. Okay. Uh, in the video, an officer said he doesn't match the description. What did that mean? I believe um, Mr. Lucero provide some description to one of the officers. You know, I believe they were referring to the male victim uh, that he didn't match what we had. Okay. And were you, when you were in the apartment, uh, <coughs> was everyone wearing a radio? Correct. Okay. And so what radio traffic was going on inside the apartment? I don't recall. I mean, we had really bad radio reception. Were officers being given uh, information as it was coming in in regards to, uh, for example, what the shooter looked like? I believe one of the officers broadcasted a description. I just don't recall what it was. And were you and other officers trying to determine whether uh, the individual on the couch matched the description of the shooter? Correct. Okay. And then did you all determine he did not match? Correct. All right. Uh, you then said later on in the video that we need people to start clearing out. What did you mean by that? Um, just, again, just preserve the scene, have minimal officers walking um, in the crime scene, uh, just secure it. Uh, 
you said just start marking the bullets. What do you mean by that? Um, we'll, we'll try to put like a, we have a song notebook most officers carry. We'll work out a page and we'll put it next to the evidence just so, um, just a visual sign that this is evidence. Okay, so when officers arrive on scene, you start to mark evidence with, uh, it's a little piece of white paper. Correct. And you fold it over and then you start marking evidence. Correct. And is that to aid the detectives who come on to the scene later on? Correct. All right, and um, the officer in the video uh, towards the end giving the commands, who was that? Uh, that was the Sergeant Thurgood Miller. And when he told you to help out with security, what did that mean? Uh, we still didn't, we knew that the male wasn't the shooter. Well, we believed he wasn't the shooter. And we didn't know where the shooter was. So um, we wanted someone to hold security so that someone didn't come up behind us. So after you cleared the rooms that were inside the apartment that we saw on the body web camera, what did you do next? Um, I believe I got another officer and we just held um, security outside of the apartment complex. Outside the complex? Sorry, outside of the uh, apartment, in the hallway. Okay, so you and another officer held security outside 3508. Correct. How long did you do that? Five, 10 minutes, I believe. And during those five to 10 minutes, did uh, the shooter or anyone else come back to the apartment? No. What did you do after that? Um, we stayed there. Uh, there was some information that was broadcasted over the radio that a possible suspect had been located and stopped. Um, I think there was some back and forth between the supervisors, and it was determined that uh, it was a good possible. And then at that point, I just stayed on scene. Uh, my partner had located a witness and was interviewing them. Uh, so I just stayed there until I was relieved. I believe the homicide detective arrived. Okay. And you said that your partner was Officer Totten. of us in there. And, and again, <laughs> it was, you were responding to an emergency, right? And so that's the correct protocol that you would go in and kind of assess everything, right? Correct. But at the same time, if there were things on the floor, pieces of evidence that could have been shuffled around or kicked, not on purpose, but on accident by police responding to this emergency, right? Correct. Um, but you were doing everything you could once you got in to sort of step over things, make sure you didn't step on any of the things that you described, like the live rounds, right? Officer Barnett, but I'm not sure. Um, did you ever um, do anything specifically with um, the decedents? Did you look at them? Did you get a good look at them or move them in any way? They didn't move them, um, and I did see them when I walked in, and they were there while we, until we moved out of the uh, apartment. Also, um, they they were seated on a couch, um, and then behind them on the wall was like a, a photo of a person or some sort of engraving of a person. 
to the right, there was the, uh, I think it was like a U2 um, award or, or something like that. Okay, it was, a, if you remember, it was some sort of award and it was a picture of Mr. Blue on space, is that right? Correct. When you noticed um, at some point that there were live rounds um, on the floor, did you discover those or did someone else discover those? I saw them. Um, and a live round, you said to us, is, it's just like a regular bullet. Correct, it hasn't been shot. The, the projectile and the casing are all intact still. Okay, so it just looks like what most of us probably think of when we think of a bullet, right? Correct. Um, and if those were in a gun, um, how would they have ended up out of a gun if they weren't fired through um, the gun? Just from previous shootings, I know sometimes um, it's from the suspect trying to clear a malfunction or they're not aware of the status of their weapon round chambered already and they go to rack it and they'll eject a live round. Okay. I can't say for sure but that's from my experiences. From your experience it could be um, and this is experience being a, a police officer and using firearms as part of your training right? Correct. Um, and this is something you were taught in the academy is that right? The academy and then throughout field training and then just being on the job. So a, a round In, and then you chamber it around by racking the slide or whatever the mechanism for that firearm and then that'll put it in the barrel and then when you pull the trigger um, release the firing pin which would strike a primer and then let the round go. And so racking the gun, is that something that needs to happen with every gun? Correct. Um, so there so what's the difference between like an automatic weapon and a non-automatic weapon? Um, well, any gun ha has to be at some point not loaded, so with an empty chamber. Put a, a gun that's not loaded. I'll leave the magazine in. You have to manipulate some sort of charging handle or slide or bolt to pull a round out and, and then seat it in the chamber seat. You're ready to fire it. Correct. Okay. Um, and do you know what kind of gun was used in this case? I'm not sure of the exact make. I believe it was the Glock, I think it was. That. Okay. Um, and then for a Glock, it's the same sort of thing, right? You put the bullets into the magazine. Officer, you didn't personally kick any of the live rounds or the cartridge casings on the ground, right? Correct. And you didn't see any other officers kick any of them? Correct. Right. Uh, do you recall where you saw the shell casings and the live rounds? If you're looking at the couch where the victims, I believe they were to the, to the right, from what I recall. What do you mean to the right? Like in the living room? In the living room, correct. Okay. Closer to the kitchen. All right. So are we talking about the dining room area? Uh, they were still in the living room. If you're looking at the victims to the right. Okay. Uh, to the right behind the couch? I believe so. In front and behind. Right. And you weren't necessarily searching for every piece of evidence um, in the apartment, right? Correct. I had noticed a few and then other officers canvassed for what they could find. Okay. So when you noticed uh, the fire casings or the live rounds that you saw, you were telling officers to mark them? Correct. Okay. And then once it's marked, uh, you said that little white paper is folded over and is it placed entirely over the piece of evidence? Um, sometimes they put it over, sometimes to the side, just, just generally in the vicinity of whatever that evidence is. Okay, and that's alerting other officers that there's something on the ground and, and don't step on this, right? Correct. <clears throat> All right, you were asked some questions about uh, guns. When an individual racks a gun, mm -hmm. does a live round fall out of the gun? If you rack a gun on an unloaded firearm, it should not. Okay. And if it's loaded? It will eject the, the live round that's in the barrel. Okay. So when a gun is racked, a live round's ejected, and then that person can fire the bullet that's now in the chamber. 
Correct. If it was unloaded, it would put a live round, and you could fire. And if it was already loaded and you racked it, it would eject a live round, but it would still put another live round in it, so it would still be able to fire. Okay. So if a person racks a gun one time, there's a bullet in the chamber that can be fired, and then another bullet is loaded directly into the chamber? And when you rack a loaded gun, the original round that was in that chamber will come out, and they would put another bullet inside the chamber, and then you can still shoot it. Okay. Uh, that person does not need to keep racking the gun in order to keep firing. If it's a semi automatic can go correct. Okay. So uh, a person can continue to fire as many bullets are as are being put in the chamber. Correct. Correct? Okay. If a person racks the gun again while there's already a live round in the chamber, is the live round then ejected? not have to rack the gun to continue firing, right? Correct. Okay. And then if a gun is racked again after that, like now we're at a third time, does a live round again get ejected from the gun? Correct. As long as there's ammunition in the magazine, and if you keep racking it, it will continue to eject the live round and put in another round. And put in a new round Correct. that can immediately be fired. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay, very briefly. When you were coming in, we saw it on the Eric Moreno. And please spell both of those names. Eric, E R I C, Moreno, M O R E N O. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. What is your current occupation? I'm a police officer with San Diego Police Department. How long have you been a police officer? A little over three years. And what is your current job assignment? I work the downtown area, Central Division. Can you describe the training that you received to become a police officer? Um, we've gone through a six month process of training regarding uh, investigation, shooting, defensive tactics. What is the training you received on shooting? Um, with shooting, it's um, shooting on the move, shooting when uh, uh, a threat is present, um, shooting at night, shooting over vehicles. And did you receive training in the investigation? in the investigation of cases involving shootings? We did. What type? Um, just types of ammunitions that are used in shootings, different types of calibers. And what about evidence found at the crime scene? Um, yes, just marking evidence when casings are found or projectiles. I'm sorry? When casings or projectiles are found, impacts. Is that approximately how many investigations have you responded to that involve shootings? Quite a few. Give me a ballpark. How many? If I get a ballpark, probably 50. I'd like to talk to you about October 21st, 2021. Uh, what radio call did you respond to about 3.11 p.m.? Uh, we got a radio call of um, 
two people found with gunshot wounds in an apartment. What apartment? Uh, it was apartment uh, 3508. Where did you go upon your arrival? Uh, upon my arrival, my partner and I um, made it into the lobby and up the elevator. Um, once inside, we already had first responding units already there, kind of um, getting more information about what was happening. Well, my partner at the time was Christopher Barnett. When you arrived on scene, who was already there? Um, already on scene, uh, I believe it was Officer Diego Arianes, Nancy McMichael, Terrell Totten, um, Ryan Nislight, and Paul Yee. And when you arrived in the lobby, were they in the lobby or already upstairs? They were already upstairs on the 35th floor. How were you able to get access to the elevator? Uh, one of the security guards downstairs had one of the uh, service elevators open for us. Okay. How long did it take you to get up to the 35th floor? Within minutes. You said minutes, but it took a couple minutes? Yeah, a couple of minutes. Were there stops made, like people getting on and off the elevator? No, I think security had stated they would locked all the other elevators, and that was the only one operating at the time. Okay. So no one got on and off, and it still took you a couple minutes to get up. Correct. Were you wearing your full police uniform that day? I was. Were you wearing a body worn camera? I was. Are you wearing that right now? I am. Uh, it's the black camera on yeah, your chest? This one right here, yes. Uh, not the same camera you were wearing on October 21st of 2021? Not the same one. I've had others due to malfunction or batteries dying, but yes, it's similar to the same one I was wearing that day. Okay. And you activated your body worn camera. As I went 97 on the call, it was activated. What is went 97? Oh, sorry, when I arrived on scene. Okay, I am going to play a portion of your body on camera, and then I'll ask you questions after. Exiting the elevator on the 35th floor to the uh, target unit at 3508. Okay, and so uh, the beginning of the video showed your route. When you got off the elevator, did you make a right? Correct. Okay, and then there was a hallway there? Correct. And then you made another right? Correct. And then you went down that hallway, and then did you make another right? Correct. To get to the end of the hallway? Yes. All right, and so 3508 was at the end of the hallway? Yes, end of the hallway to the right. And we saw on the body worn camera that there was a stairwell to the, uh, immediately before apartment 3508, there was a stairwell? Yes. What officer was in that stairwell? I believe it was Officer T uh, Terrell Totten. Okay. And was he interviewing um, the neighbors? Yes. And so before you had already arrived on scene, he was already conducting interviews? Correct. That was my partner, uh, Officer Barnett. Why was that used? 
Um, we radio call had something to do with uh, gunshots being heard from one of the witnesses, and so in order to for our safety, we had the shield present. I don't recall what unit it was, but it was just adjacent. Uh, so the neighbor's apartment? Correct. And in the apartment, did you all then form a plan to enter 3508? We were, we were formulating a plan, and we ended up making a, an inch, or what we call a stick, kind of an entry team with our officers lined up, and then um, we decided to make an emergency breach to the unit 3508. So once the breach was done, did you then enter the apartment? Yes. Uh, and what did you see when you entered the apartment? Uh, when we entered the apartment, there was um, two people down on the couch, a male and a female. Um, we ended up clearing the rest of the unit to make sure everything else was safe for officers to enter. And then we conducted our investigation from there. Uh, when you first entered the apartment, were the male and female on the couch deceased? It appeared to be. Yes. Uh, did either of the victims have a pulse? Neither. When you entered, uh, what was your role? Where did you go? Uh, my role, I was helping other officers. Um, we ended up clearing the balcony. Um, there was a, another room just before the balcony that was also, I helped assist clearing. And then um, in the bedroom also. Yes, he did. What was your assignment? My assignment was just to find any evidence inside the room and scene security. When you entered the apartment, uh, you were aware that it was a shooting, correct? Correct. What were you um, under the assumption that you would see evidence on the ground or anywhere in the apartment? Yes. Uh, were you doing your best to not disturb any of that evidence? Yes, I was. Um, one was located, but I did not move. Oh, sorry, no, I did not. Okay, meaning items on the floor? No, items on the floor was not moved. Okay. Um, and then you said your assignment was starting to look for evidence. Uh, what did you do in that regard? Um, in the regard of collecting evidence, or locating, I found um, shell casings, projectiles, and a couple impacts um, on one of the walls. Where did you find the shell casings? On the couch. Um, between the couch and the main master bedroom, and then another one inside the master bedroom. Okay, the shell casings that you saw, you said near the couch, are they behind the couch um, in the area between the couch and the wall to the bedroom? Yeah, there was, I'd say approximately six inches between the back of the couch and the wall to the master were uh, located uh, two shell casings and a projectile. Okay. Uh, are the two shell casings and the projectile that you found behind the couch, was that in an area where anyone would be walking? Not really, no. Okay. It's, it's a small area? Yeah. Between the couch and the wall? Mm -hmm. how, how many inches would you say? I'd say six to seven. And then did you mark those casings? I did. Um, with one of our PD-145s, I tore a piece of paper and folded it in half, kind of like a little tent. Is that a small piece of white paper? Yes. All right, and then did you, you said you saw a shell casing in the bedroom. Where was that? It was located in the main area of the bedroom area. Did you mark that? I did. The same way with the little paper tent? Yes. That was all I saw, yeah. And did you see any live bullets, any unfired bullets? I did not. Were you personally looking for every type of, every piece of evidence in the apartment? I could. Okay. Uh, is that the role of the homicide detectives? To process the crime scene for evidence? Yes, we just kind of help find things before they get there. Correct. Right. And so you, you 
you looked around and started to find things, you marked some items, um, but you didn't look at the entire apartment to see where every piece of evidence was? No. Is that fair to say? Yes. in the master bedroom closet? Um, as I was continuing my search for evidence, I noticed a uh, Glock um, firearm box sitting on the top, I guess the, sh the top shelf of the closet. Okay. And why was that significant to you? Um, because Glocks are firearms and there was a firearm used in the, to fire these uh, bullets. So. Okay. Were you looking to see if there was a firearm inside the apartment? We were. Okay. Did you find one? No, we didn't. When you were conducting your uh, investigation for evidence, were there, was there information being broadcast on the radios? Yes, I, th I think they had a license plate from a previous um, incident and then um, an incident re uh, regarding the DV was um, put out over the air. Our dispatchers, they were able to run the number used to, uh, for the initial call and were able to um, find previous calls for service. Okay. What information were you all as officers seeking um, and relaying to dispatch? Uh, just names, trying to possibly ID the victims on the, on the couch, who the person that called was. Okay, so the person that called, what do you mean by that? Uh, just the reporting party, just trying to identify, was this person possibly related? Oh, uh, we did. And uh, dispatch was running the name of the reporting party or any vehicles associated with the reporting party? Correct. Okay, and then also any vehicles associated with the apartment? Correct. And you said that information was located in a prior domestic violence call? Correct. And so uh, were you receiving information on the radio about officers locating that vehicle associated with the apartment? Yes. I believe it was a Jeep. Now, at the time that you're inside the apartment, uh, you don't know yet who the shooter is. No. Okay. And so you and the other officers are trying to determine that. Correct. What information were you receiving that helped you and the other officers start to identify the suspect? Um, well, I, one of, I had noticed a, a YouTube plaque on a wall with a, a name on it. Um, we had looked up the name on YouTube just to identify if this person may have been the male, um, but we it didn't match the male on the couch. And who was the male on the YouTube plaque? I don't recall the name or the username on the plaque. Okay, but you looked up the name on the plaque and you found, uh, what did you find? Uh, we found a bunch of videos, um, kind of uh, imitation videos of characters from movies. We did. Okay, and then what determination did you make? We determined the person in the in the videos was not the person on the couch. And when you were present inside the apartment, did the paramedics arrive? They did. Were there multiple paramedics? Yes. about 40 minutes. And at some point in time, did you receive information that uh, the suspect was located? Yes. Okay. And the, that the chief was located? Correct, yes.
It was, yes. Um, and you were asked about whether you moved any items on the floor. Um, when you were walking in, yourself and the other what, five or six officers that were with you, um, when you first entered the apartment, you were not concerned with what was on the floor, is that right? Correct. You were concerned with whether there was someone else alive that could be a shooter inside the apartment? Correct. Clearing the apartment? Correct. Um, and determining whether there was anyone in, who needed help inside of the apartment, is that right? Yes. So when you told us that you didn't move any items on the floor, you mean after sort of everything had been cleared, um, you then began to look around on the floor, is that right? Correct, yes. But prior to that, you were not paying attention to things on the floor, No. Correct? You said that um, at some point while you were inside of the apartment, information began to come in through the radio about um, maybe the apartment or people who live there or phone numbers associated with the apartment, is that right? Correct. Um, and one of the things that you told us was that, um, based on the reporting party, whoever called 911, um, that that phone number was looked up and there were um, calls to service from that telephone number. Correct. Um, and they were 911 calls placed from that telephone number previously, is that right? That, I, that if it was that phone number, but the name and associated with that apartment, yes. Um, I may have. That's not. It was more of names and unit. The the apartment, the calls for service from that apartment. Okay. So, are you aware of whether anyone looked up calls for service for the telephone number that called nine one one that day? No, I'm not. It was a silver plaque with a YouTube logo and a, a username on top of it, or printed on it. Do you remember another picture hanging on the wall of a person? I, not that I recall. Okay, thank you. Nothing further. No, Your Honor. Thank you. Please call Craig Tortline. First name is Craig, last name is Torline. And please spell uh, both of those names. Craig, C-R-A-I-G, Torline is T-O-R-L-I-N-E. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. What is your current occupation? I am a firefighter paramedic with the city of San Diego. How long have you been a firefighter paramedic? I have been a firefighter paramedic for just over 11 years. What are your job duties as a firefighter? Uh, firefighting, mostly just fire suppression. Uh, as a paramedic, I work jointly on doing anything EMS-related, uh, whether it be medical aids, traumas, um, basic life support, and all the way up to advanced life support. Can you describe the education and training you received to become a firefighter paramedic? Yes, I went to uh, EMT school for 10 months at Emsta College here in San Diego. Um, I worked on an ambulance doing interfacility transports for approximately a year and a half um, before entering paramedic school. Paramedic school is approximately a two year, pro, uh, two, two and a half year program with an internship at the end in hospital clinicals. Um, and uh, for that, I went to NCTI paramedic school here in San Diego as well. And what type of training did you receive during paramedic school about uh, offering 
medical aid and determining whether an individual is deceased or not? Uh, we studied protocols uh, daily in our paramedic school, um, whether to withhold or give aid in, in regards to uh, resuscitative efforts. Uh, we have, it's an acronym called DRIED, and if it stands for uh, decomposition, rigor mortis, incineration, uh, evisceration of the heart or brain, or decapitation. If we walk on scene and there are any one of those uh, present, that is enough right there for us to withhold resuscitation and not contact base hospital. Uh, no need to get a base hospital physician on the radio. We're able to pronounce uh, after seeing any one of those. Why are there no resuscitation efforts used in those scenarios? Because uh, their patient is deemed beyond help, any, any medical help at that point. Okay, I want to talk to you about October 21st, 2021, uh, after 3 p.m. Where were you dispatched? Uh, we were dispatched downtown. I was working at Fire Station 11 off 25th and Broadway. I believe we were dispatched somewhere off 14th Street to a high-rise building um, on what we call a standback. Uh, we were stood back about approximately a couple blocks away uh, from the location out of sight until San Diego PD cleared us in. Um, at that point, we were uh, escorted upstairs to, I do not recall what floor, um, to a high-rise where PD escorted us into the building. Okay. And so, uh, do you recall when exactly you got the call to come to that high-rise? I, I do not recall the times. Okay. Sometime after 3 p.m.? After, after 3 p.m., exact time, I'm not sure. Okay, and then you said you stood by? What does that mean? So we stood by, once we were dispatched, um, I believe San Diego PD had the call, we were dispatched um, in anticipation that they were going to need us that we stand back, um, it's our policy to stand back until it's out of sight, at least two blocks away, um, until San Diego PD deems it safe, safe enough for us to enter, and they have cleared the scene. So we were standing by while they were clearing the scene. Okay, why would it not be safe for you to enter? Uh, because there were initial reports of gunshots being fired, so anything gunshot related, we always stand back. Uh, how do you receive the call to be uh, we're at our fire station. We have tones, overhead tones that go off um, and computer screens on the apparatus floor and inside the station. So the tones go off and there's a speaker um, that dispatches the time, the location, and what units are going. Um, and that's right across the screen in red writing as well. Okay. Is that from a 911 dispatcher or from police? Uh, that is from our fire, uh, our fire dispatch. So once you arrived at the apartment complex, uh, was it Spire San Diego? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Was it Spire San Diego, the apartment complex you arrived at? That sounds familiar, yes. Okay, and then how did you enter the building? Uh, once we got there, um, we were, like I said, we staged a couple blocks over, pulled up onto the scene. Um, PD entered us into the building. I believe there was escorts at the elevators. They escorted us up the elevator. Uh, I'm not sure what floor we went up. Um, they took us up to the elevator and they escorted us into the apartment room. Did you have a crew with you? I had a crew with me. I had, uh, I'm, a, I'm the firefighter paramedic. I had my EMT firefighter partner with me, uh, our engineer, which is our driver, and our captain. And then we were accompanied with the uh, ambulance unit as well with an EMT paramedic on the ambulance. Okay. And so once you got off the elevator, then did you, were you escorted to the that's correct. And once you arrived inside apartment 3508, what did you see? Uh, upon walking in, there was several PD, San Diego PD officers in there. Uh, they escorted us over to, which I believe is the living room, and I saw uh, two patients, two uh, potential victims. They were motionless, uh, kind of slumped over on the couch. Upon approaching them, um, I noticed a male and a female, approximately mid-30s, uh, motionless, uh, not breathing. Upon checking for a pulse, there were, neither of them had a pulse, neither of them were breathing. And 
it appeared that there was substance of uh, that was very consistent with brain matter um, exposed coming out of their head and possibly on the drywall behind them as well. So. Okay. Uh, in front of you, do you have people's exhibit number twenty-five? Yes. Okay. What is shown here? This appears to be the. Uh, female patient that we saw slumped over on the male's lap um, on the couch, and it looks like which is with the living room that we responded to. Uh, is this an accurate depiction of how both the both the male and female appeared when you entered the apartment? Yes, that's accurate. So when you went to, uh, to into the apartment, uh, did you approach approach both the male and female? Yes, that's correct. And were there pulses taken? Their pulses, yes, both of their pulses were taken. You said there was no pulse? There was no pulse on either patient. And you said neither patient was breathing? Neither patient was breathing. Uh, were they pronounced deceased? They were pronounced deceased just very shortly after that. At what time? Uh, I believe the time on the report was 1531. What time is that? Uh, 3, 331. 331 p.m.? That's correct. Okay. And you said that uh, part of your determination was that's correct. And that's based off the brain matter. We did not uh, use any resuscitative efforts. Did you do anything else on scene? Uh, I believe we were looking for ID um, for both the male and the patient. I don't think we were able to come up with ID at that time, uh, driver's license, anything like that, just to put into our reports. Uh, once we were unsuccessful finding any identification, uh, we were escorted out of the building by PD. And you don't transport the bodies uh, to your unit, correct? That's correct, we do not. We left them on scene with PD. Chandler Haddix. And please spell uh, just your last name. H A D D I X. Thank you. And please uh, speak into the microphone. Good morning. Good morning. Where were you living in October of 2021? I was living on the 35th floor of Spire, San Diego. In what apartment? 3503. Who were you living with at the time? Uh, roommate. have any security camera outside of your apartment? Yes. What did you have? It was a Google Nest or Ring camera. Showing you people's exhibit number 28. What is shown here? My front door. This apartment 3508? I'm sorry, 3503? Oh, three, correct. Okay. And then where is the Nest camera? It is to the right of the door handle on the wall. So we're seeing a black uh, oval to the right of the door handle? That is correct. Is that the Nest camera? Yes. And is this a fair and accurate depiction of how your apartment door appeared if you're standing in the hallway looking right at it? Correct. Okay. And then showing you People's Exhibit 29, what is shown here? That would 
be the hallway facing towards the elevator bay. Um, oh, that's that's the hall facing from my apartment. Okay, so your apartment uh, is, if someone was standing in front of this photograph, that's where your apartment is, your door. Yes. Correct? And so is this photograph, we're looking um, from your apartment down the hallway? Correct. Right, and then what is on the right where that gray door is? That is the elevator bay for everyone on the floor. Okay, and then what is on the left right across from the elevator bay? That's a mirror. Uh, if you were to walk straight down that hallway, you see that there's a brown door at the end? Yes. If, do you know what apartment that is? Um, maybe 3505. So there is an apartment that's straight at the end of the hallway, correct? Yes. And then do you have to make a right yes. in front of that door to access the next hallway? Yes. Does that hallway lead to apartment 3508? Yes. Okay. How does the Nest camera function that you had outside your door? It automatically picks up sound or motion. Um, it's constantly recording. And do you have, uh, is there an application that's on your cell phone or yes. an iPad where you're able to view the video uh, that the Nest captures? Yes. So uh, in People's Exhibit Number 29, um, when you're looking down this hallway, is that what the Nest camera captures? Yes. Okay. So the Nest camera captures motions or people, things like that, that are uh, coming up and down that hallway? Correct. And does the Nest camera also capture audio? Yes. Did you know the individuals who lived inside apartment 3508? No, I kept to myself. I had seen them many times, but I didn't really connect with my neighbors. Do you know the names of the individuals who lived in 3508? I know the name of the defendant okay. uh, for now. Do you see him in court, the person who lived in 3508? Yes. Okay. Can you point him out and describe some articles of clothing that he's currently wearing? He is wearing a blazer with a blue shirt. Thank you. Had you seen the defendant uh, here on the floor coming from that apartment? Sometime in 2021? Yes. Had you ever seen uh, police uh, go to their apartment in the past? In yes. 2021? Yes. Do you know how many times? Maybe twice. From what you saw? From what I saw. Have you ever heard any violence or arguments coming from apartment 3508? Yes. Uh, when you heard that, were you in your apartment? Um, maybe in transit between the elevator to my apartment, yes. Uh, do you know how often you would hear what sounded like arguments or violence from that apartment? Um, maybe once every few weeks. Are you able to say what time frame you heard this? I can't recall. Okay. Sometime in 2021? Yeah. Was it in uh, the period before uh, October of 2021? Yes. No, I, you know, personally, I mind my own business. Understood. Uh, I just want to know what kinds of things did you hear? Uh, did you hear um, any anything associated with violence or throwing things or anything like that? Absolutely. What did you hear? Um, commotion. Sounded like um, could have been something thrown at a wall and. Um, Large, uh, loud yelling. What was the yelling that you heard, male or female? Um, a combination of both. Did you ever hear a child yelling? No. All right. Um, October twenty-first.
31st of 2021, did the police come to your door? Yes. Is that sometime after 3 p.m.? Yes. Were you home? Yes. And uh, what were you doing at the time, if you recall, right before the police got there? I was doing laundry. I was listening to relatively loud music. I was, I recall, I was listening to Harry Styles. Okay. But you said it was loud? Yeah. All right. Uh, did you hear anything unusual? I did. What'd you hear? I heard loud banging. And what I thought I heard was a scream. And at first I didn't know what to think of it. Um, I just was in a good vibe that morning, doing my own routines. It was my day off. And um, I thought to myself, oh, it's possibly that couple down the hallway again. And I just went about my business. When the police officers arrived at your door, was it two of them? Yes. And did they ask you about your nest camera? They did. Okay. Uh, were you helpful in assisting police with providing the nest camera footage? Yes. Okay. How were you able to provide that footage, either you or your roommate? Um, well, my, it was owned by my roommate. I had access to it through my tablet. And um, he was at school home. I allowed the officers to come in and we um, accessed the footage through my tablet and then I allowed them to further investigate. Okay. So you had the footage uh, and they were asking you for the entire day's footage? Yes. Were you looking at any of the videos while trying to access them to show to the officer? Yes. What did you see on the I saw the defendant um, pacing the hallway multiple times, and then, um, and that was earlier in the morning, between like 9 and um, 11 in the morning, um, and then later, around 3 p.m. he returned, between 2 and 3 p.m. he returned, and um, then there was some loud audio that I didn't really care to listen to. It just seemed pretty dramatic what had happened. All right, so um, again, we're in People's 29. Uh, this is the view that you were watching on the Nest camera, correct? I'm sorry. The in People's Exhibit number 29, when we were talking about your apartment mm -hmm. being uh, you know, off camera, facing this hallway, uh, mm -hmm. is that what you were watching on, your, on the Nest camera? Yes. So when you said that you watched the video from the morning, you said between 9 and 11 a.m. You said the defendant was pacing the hallway. Mm -hmm. uh, do you recall where he was? Um, in between the elevator bay and um, the entrance to their hallway. Uh, did you hear him having any conversations with anyone? Um, yes. At the time, did you know who it was? No. All right, and then you said that seemed that he had gone back and forth to the apartment multiple times, or maybe he was um, going in between floors, possibly. It, it seemed like he was casing the apartment. What were the loud noises you heard on the video? And they were gunshots. And after you heard those gunshots on the video, watching the video, do you see the defendant running towards his apartment? Yeah, he went back and forth multiple times. Okay. And then did you hear him have a conversation? Yes. In the hallway? And again, and you, you didn't know who it was? No. And then after, uh, at some point, you don't see or hear the defendant anymore on the next video? Correct. And now we're getting into re real time? Correct. Right? So, uh, the Nest videos, um, when you saw the, uh, the video, was there a timestamp on it? Yes. And was it accurate to real time? Yes. After uh, you watched the videos with the officer, did you provide? 
by them to the officer. Yes. Is that officer Ryan Dislike? Yes. You were called. Okay. How did you provide the videos to Officer Dislike? Well, we sent it in a video file, PDF file, I think. And were there several different videos that you sent? Well, we did a screen recording of the entire day. So you sent uh, all Nest video footage that you had on your uh, tablet or the phone, um, and you sent all the whole day's video files to Officer Dislike. Correct. Was that right there when he was there? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you have to send any other videos to him later on in the day? Not that I recall. Okay. So everything was sent when he was present uh, with you at your apartment? Yes. us just 